really delighted to be asked to interview her. Um, I thought this was like a salute, the symbolizing the passing of the baton to the next generation. So will you please clap for all the young people Four days ago, <laughs> um, um, so I feel as 
so Kobe is the real activist today. <laughs> But I, I think we can't talk about um, 
diaspora of Nepal. I mean, the, the, there is always a kind of relationship with leaving, especially for us Africans again. Because still, in the global imagination, we don't really matter. We don't really matter. I think that's the reality. And you can tell... For you, now. Well, for now, but, but if it's up to us to make that change. Because if you look at the foreign policy of um, Western nations, by their actions, you can tell them, not only do they not think we matter, they don't think we will matter. They think China will matter, they think India will matter. Not really us. And you can tell by the foreign policy. And I think that also um, affects the way that we are treated as people who visit or live there. And so like, the burden is on us to somehow create a certain kind of psychological barrier to this. And I think it comes from just having self-confidence. It's the most we can do, or the least we can do. And I think self-confidence comes from... And I don't mean the kind of just getting self-confidence and proud. It comes from knowing where you're from and who you are. Which is why I feel very strongly, for example, that in this country we need to know our history. You know, we need, we need to... The curriculum is that people are being taught is just... Well, we're talking about teacher and teaching. It's nonsense. Complete nonsense. We, we need to remake the curriculum. So, so if, we, if we teach our children today, it's not teaching them civics and history, but we need to change the curriculum. You know, teach them civics in a way that they, they have a sense of self. They know that their past is not some dark thing. They know that despite the flaws that we have, every, every nation has flaws. Right? But, but also every nation has greatness. And to think of our past as one that was worth taking care of. Absolutely. Teach them that Africa is the cradle of mankind. It is. Was actually a really interesting, vibrant place where people traded, where they had very complex political systems. We don't know our history. Okay, I, 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 you remember this uh, response you gave to Caroline Brewer at La uh, Nuit Messi Day uh, in France or on bookshops? Uh, you have the most famous. Yeah, tell me. I don't remember. <laughs> Actually, but you know, so I, I, it was, and I remember actually afterwards feeling, feeling sorry for the woman because <laughs> her question I thought was not so much about her. Because I, I was taken back by it. We're having a conversation that I thought seemed very you know, reasonable. And suddenly she says to me, Are there bookshops in Nigeria? <laughs> and you know, I remember thinking, Well, you just told them that I grew up in Nigeria. I went to the university campus. So which type of university campus doesn't have a bookshop? You know, I just found it a very strange question. So I looked at her school like what? And then she said, oh, I'm asking you because most French people don't know. I then said to her that I thought it reflected very badly on French people. Because you cannot, I think there's something, there's a wonderful, and I see wonderful examples in entitlement that seven Westerners have. You know, where you can parade your ignorance and think that it's fine. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, I mean, you can to teach them that they're teaching themselves nonsense. <laughs> so, we've got a job on our hands. But let's come back to uh, Nigeria, uh, where we're all in the same kind of soup. <laughs> What are your thoughts on the Nigerian school? I don't know. Drop it right there. Um, I am. What are my thoughts on the Nigerian school? How much time do you have? Um, I'm sure that I'm not going to be able to do it. I think my, my feminism is not so much one that's interested in thinking about how women can be influenced men. I think I'm interested in how women can become the best that they can possibly be. And how they can, and, and how they can. And yes, women do have a role to play, but actually my vision is one in which women have choices, and women can choose not to become um, domestic people, right? that, that 
My vision is one in, in a world in which women can choose to be a mother or not and not have any consequences. I mean, not have any... Not have any... Yes, yes. Where women can choose to um, be married or not married and also not have somebody questioning you or somehow attributing your marital status to some kind of you know, moral deficiency. Because you know, in our society, when marriages go back, it's always the woman's fault.
Yeah, you must take five years to get on the top. Must as well. He was researching in this part of the world, and it cuts across cultures everywhere. The same is not quality. And um, I think that the people, the, the kind that I, I, I don't mind responding to is, you know, when people say, oh, women are men in this conversation. I feel very strongly that men have to be part of the feminist conversation. The feminism is not about hating men. Feminism is not about destroying men. Feminism is about creating equal opportunities. Right? And, so, and so, I want to have that conversation. And I, and I can see how, if, if you live in a system in which it seems natural that men are power, we keep seeing only men in positions of power. So at some point we think it's natural. So when a woman then decides to take power, we don't know what to do with her. And it's not just men, it's women as well. Women don't know what to do with powerful women. That's, and we often blame the men for all the ills of the world, it's all your fault. Um, but where do we position ourselves as women for? Where do we take responsibility? You know, the, the, so women participate in research. Women, but we also, I think, need to ask the question in the law who benefits? Women participate in a system that ultimately benefits men. That, that's, you know, we, when, when a powerful woman rises up, yes, we are, unfortunately. I find myself even questioning myself because there's sometimes you meet a woman in, in a way that one behavior is judged differently judge differently in a woman. When I was growing up, there was a very interesting woman professor, and she, um, you know, was fierce and just really wonderful. But I remember often people say she's very like that. Now there was a man, professor, who was very much like her. You know, he walked into a really field the room, and people said that that man is a leader, he has authority. And, and as a child, I remember thinking, well, what's the difference? The behavior is the same. What is different is the body exhibiting the behavior. So I started to realize that the problem is not, the problem is you have a problem with women because you're not allowing her to occupy space in the world. And the reason I think talking about this thing is important is we need to change. You know, we can change laws, that's important, because there's too many laws that we need to change. I'm not sure if you think a woman can still bail, can, can a woman bail somebody from. No, 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 right? The woman can. Which is like, Parents, I think being a parent is already just a complex, difficult thing. 
and I just had only three and a half years of experience, but I used to be more comfortable pontificating about this is what we should do until I became a parent and then I'm not saying it again. However, I would say to parents, listen to your children. I think ours is a culture in which we 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 confuse fear for respect. So we have children who fear their parents. I don't think that's respect. And I think it's a parent who creates a tone of, of, of the relationship with the child. That's why I would say to parents, don't listen to your children. Actually, let them talk. Let, let them talk. And the best way to correct a child is not by shouting. Because I speak from experience as a child, when you shout, the child switches off. And so I would say, listen, listen to your children. And when you correct them, try and be safe. Keep, keep the temperature low. For teachers, again, I think teachers have a very difficult situation here in this country because they're very poorly trained, and it's not their fault. It's not their fault. They go to teacher training colleges. I just put one in another state. So I think teachers, again, have this burden of doing more than they should, which is they now have to sort of go off and improve themselves. Um, I think that teachers in this country who are doing their best. I have really wonderful teachers in school. So we have to teach the teachers not We do, we do, we do, yes. So, in concluding this very exciting segment, I'm going to ask you to think of something personal. She didn't have this question before, so excuse anything she says. Something that is not in the public domain that you really feel passionate about. The problem is I can't tell you. Thank you.